In this episode, we look at six things about the Black Plague, aka the Bubonic Plague, aka Death Incarnate, aka the Grim Reaper's Agent that blew my mind, and I'm a doctor, and I think will blow your mind too. Tune in. The doctor is in. Welcome back. This is your pal, Dr. Sal, and today I'm going to run you through six crazy facts about the bubonic plague, aka the Black Death, which uh, blew my mind and I'm pretty sure should be interesting to you as well, and hopefully your mind will be blown by the end of this presentation. So I'm going to do it in a kind of a question and answer format. And the first question I'll ask you about the Black Plague, I think most everybody uh, realizes this is a, a horrible um, historical event that occurred during about the 1300s um, and killed a lot of people. Now, to put things in perspective though, how many people do you think the Black Plague touched when it um, hit Europe? You hear about diseases today like um, say like Ebola or the HIV epidemic or stuff like uh, swine flu. All those specters compared to the Black Plague or the Bubonic Plague are basically lightweights in comparison. The Black Death killed roughly half of Europe's population and surrounding environments. Now again, to put that in perspective, that just sounds like a big fuzzy number. I would bet you that HIV, uh, Ebola, even SARS, all those things, I bet they didn't even uh, kill not even 1% of the number of people that um, the Black Death did. And to, to put it in your mind's eye, uh, if you go out into your neighborhood and look around and just imagine that within the next five years, half of everybody that you see there is dead. Half your neighbors, half the families in, in your neighborhood or high rise or wherever you live, half of them all gone off the face of the earth. And within a, uh, a short time frame, like within about five, five years, that is absolutely decadent. I don't think most people can really comprehend that degree of destruction. Uh, it, it, it is so bad that theoretically, if the Black Death had never occurred, we probably would have invented computers several hundred years ago uh, because of the tremendous brain drain that the Black Death caused um, on the world. Now, also to put things in perspective, um, if you consider, um, imagine that it's not just half the people in your neighborhood now, Imagine it's half your entire town or half your city and all the surrounding cities that you know about, every city you've ever visited, every place that you're aware of, half the people in those environments are also dead. It was an absolute shocker when, when this hit Europe. There'd been no precedent like it before. I mean, there'd been diseases and famines and wars before on the earth, but nothing like the Black Death. They must have thought that they had done something really celestially um, bad for something like that to happen. But that takes us to the next question. Um, actually, no, I'll, I'll do what causes the Black Death uh, next. But the second question, because I'm going to carry you through six um, facts that blew my mind about it, is um, where did the Black Death or bubonic plague come from? So most people immediately tend to think that it came from uh, Europe, and you would be wrong, it did not. Uh, most experts, disease forensic experts, uh, believe that it actually began somewhere out here in the People's Republic of China, where most great flus also tend to come from. And um, some experts actually believe that it had to do with the Mongols um, inserting themselves into the uh, Gobi Desert area, causing uh, displacement of peoples, pushing them centripetally out towards um, the bigger towns, carrying with them the disease. And from there, then it just uh, exploded. 
or as they say, went viral. Then they believe that it eventually um, spread across the land here and eventually reached Europe through probably Italy, through trade um, with somewhere Turkey, I can't picture it right here, but anyway, somewhere up in this area here. Um, you can imagine the specter of uh, basically a ghost ship arriving at a harbor in Italy after doing trade out here. And uh, nearly everybody on board dead, sick, come off board. And before you know it, there's an epidemic sweeping across Europe, which eventually wipes out half the population. Unbelievable. Also, remember at this time though, across the world here, this, these areas weren't discovered yet. Columbus only came across here in uh, 1492, if my history serves me right. So these area, these guys here were still living idyllic um, at that point in time, with no care in the world. But over here, there's a horror occurring. So that's uh, where it came from. Now, the next question that I'm going to ask you is, what do you think caused the Black Death or the plague? So a lot of you um, probably are thinking, oh, it was mice or rats. So I'm just drawing one here. Mice or rats. And you would be wrong. Then another subgroup of you is probably going to think, oh, it wasn't uh, mice or rats. He's trying to trick us. It was the little fleas so it was a little fleas that are carried on the mice or rats again you're getting closer you're getting hot but you are still wrong the ultimate reason for this horrific plague that um, affected most of the world known world at that point in time is just a lowly little bacteria that packed a big punch. And this lowly little bacteria, which you can't even see with your naked eye, his name was Yersinia pestis. So how it works is that the Yersinia pestis has part of its life cycle that involves the gut of the lowly flea. The lowly flea then hitches a ride on the very mobile rodent population which was uh, quite rampant in most cities in that time and especially in Europe with poor sanitation um, and a bunch of other um, public health problems so the vector the ultimate uh, agent was this guy Yersinia pestis the real bad guy that killed millions and millions of people causing a huge brain drain which I would say we're now recovering from in the modern world he then hitched a right on these fleas which then hitched a right on the mice which then hitched a right to human houses where there's always nice scraps uh, from tables and garbage everywhere the fleas then hop off their hosts hop on to you before you know it poof you're um, scrambling trying to make out a will um, Again, to put in perspective how horrific the Black Death was, there was uh, some cities where it was almost, they even just stopped bothering to bury people. It was so, basically the undertakers, there, there wasn't enough undertakers to go around. There's huge cathedrals and underground pits and crypts and stuff where they just started piling bodies into. Absolutely horrific. Parents watched their kids die, kids watched their parents die, their grandparents die. Some people lost nearly everybody they knew in their family absolute horror like humans have never seen before or since so um so we covered there um where it came from what caused the black death or plague or bubonic plague next thing we're going to look at is the symptoms and within the symptoms we'll figure out why is it called the black death or um the black plague so the symptoms well, the other thing I want to ask you is, with the symptoms, how would you differentiate it from a common cold? One of the things that's really surprising about um, the bubonic plague is that a lot of its symptoms actually seem just like any other common cold that you might get. You get the same things like fever, chills, shakes, or what we call rigors, um, abdominal pain, vomiting. 
all stuff that would seem very familiar with a common cold. But there's a few features that kind of are more signature of the Yersinia pestis. So those things would be um, something called buboes. The buboes uh, basically are enlarged lymph nodes. So you would know sometimes like if you had strep throat, for example, you feel inside your neck and you feel like some big bulging uh, lymph nodes. Uh, this is that kind of lymphadenopathy on steroids. So for example, under the individual's armpits, you get like lumps. So this, let's see their hand here. Um, so you get lumps underneath their armpits, um, in your, up in the neck, uh, in the groin. So you're getting all these lumps. So um, that was one of the stereotypical things. That's why it was also called the bubonic plague, because bubonic stands for buboes, which is these swellings under the under the um, armpits and in the groin. So bubonic plague from buboes. Now the other name for it, so that's that's where the bubonic thing came from, bubonic plague. Now the next name that we call it is also the Black Death. So why black? What's it got to do with why why? With black death so the reason for that is another stereotypical fe feature is um, gangrene of the extremities so these people their fingers would start to turn black basically dying off their toes would start to to die off turn black um, their noses would um, turn black and start to fall off so really horrific uh, appearing disease as well with all these big ugly egg-like swellings all over the individual's body almost like they have lymphoma everywhere and then on top of that their extremities their fingers and toes and noses falling off and turning black so truly horrific the next cruel thing about the bubonic plague is how fast it would kill you within seven days so again that must have seemed kind of religiously uh, connected that the seven days in a week um, and in seven days this thing will kill you. So again, that, that caused um, kind of a, a backwardness in terms of pushing people back towards uh, religion. Because uh, it seemed like uh, something inauspicious uh, released on us by some kind of divine intervention. Um, all right, so we went through the symptoms. Uh, now, another question I wanted to ask you is, um, who's this guy here? Who's he pretending to be? This is supposed to be what they call the plague doctors. Plague doctors. Now, obviously, being a physician in the time of the Black Death was a real occupational hazard. Very high likelihood that eventually you would die too. So being short on science in that period of time uh one of the preeminent physicians of the period a guy called charles de lorme i hope i'm pronouncing that right i did do some french immersion but i would not call myself a francophone but anyway i believe that's the how you pronounce the guy's name uh, began this habit of when attending um his rich clientele who had been struck down with the um, bubonic plague or or uh, black death um, he started this uh, thing of wearing these ornate uh, masks, like this, and um, these masks in the nose tip here, almost like a toucan, uh, they, would, they would place um, special herbs and other things that they believe would protect them from miasma. So they, they were onto something to some degree. They thought that there was like these bad smells in the ear or bad feelings in the ear that could be transmitted by inhalation. So he would don this mask here with uh, different special herbs and like myrrh and zinc. And I, I can't remember all the different ones. I think even stuff like paraffin and there's a bunch of other weird stuff that today makes absolutely no sense. But anyway, back then it made sense to them. So they would stuff it with this thing here, and then that was supposed to protect the occupant. Almost like a, a precursor of the hazmats that you would see the CDC guys wearing today. That was a precursor to it. Except that the ones today are actually effective. These things were completely useless. 
Now, for whatever reason, I don't know, because it looked creepy or they thought it looked cool, somehow this is one of the first um, fashion things that went absolutely viral. All the docks across Europe um, seem to adopt it for some unknown reason. But uh, I really don't think it helped them. It just uh, maybe helped make their reputation look a little more creepy. But anyway, that's what the doctors would wear at that time as they were attending the sick, ill, and dying and suffering. So they call them the plague doctors. And occasionally you'll still see people wearing these uh, ornate masks for Halloween. Um, you, can, you can get them, for example, on eBay, costume.com, etc. Uh, if you want your neighbors to really turn, turn their heads uh, next Halloween, just punch in a uh, plague doctor on your favorite uh, costume website. And uh, you could really get some get some hair rising uh, next Halloween. So that's who the plague doctors were, in case you didn't know. No, um, it has nothing to do with Pinocchio. <laughs> uh, and then the next, the, the final question. So this is now, uh, we're on to question number six. This question is the one that really blew my mind. My question to you is, is the Black Death, a.k.a. the plague, a.k.a. bubonic plague, is it gone? Has it been eradicated? Because I've never in my entire life seen it on the news about an outbreak of plague. Well, it turns out it actually isn't. There are still cases up to today of people coming down with the plague. In fact, the last big outbreak in the United States was in the 1900s in San Francisco. The other place that is often still seen, besides the, the west side of uh, the US, is in Sub-Saharan Africa. So believe it or not, the Black Death, the plague, is not over. It still occurs. And more mind-boggling to me is that it occurs still in the United States, in, in the western um, section. So obviously, something like that isn't publicized that much, so it doesn't cause uh, widespread panic. Now, um, you might wonder if there's cases of the Black Death still going around up to today, um, how come we don't have an epidemic? How come it's not wiping out the planet like it did back in the 1300s? Well, very simple. Uh, luckily for us, the Black Death was not caused by a virus because we'd be really screwed if that were the case. It was caused by a bacteria. And as you all know, we've had antibiotics around now for over 100 years. And there's many different antibiotics that will smite this miscreant down with no hesitation, no trouble. So all the cases that occur today uh, are basically snuffed out as fast as they happen just by taking some lowly antibiotics like you might get for strep throat. So ladies and gentlemen, the Black Death is still real and still on the move, but it's not a scourge the way it was back in the medieval times. So that is the six questions that blew my mind and I hope your mind is blown on the Black Death, AKA bubonic plague. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll have some more doctor secrets on the next episode. See ya. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now.